Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be running through some of the new compliance options in TS GUI version 0.9.7.1 and above. Um, now, compliance is essentially pre-flight checks um, in some other um, GUI front ends. The reason I don't um, call it pre-flight pre-flight checks inside of TS GUI is that the pre-flight kind of implies that you check things at the very start of the GUI, therefore the start of the task sequence, um, and that's about it. With these options, what I want to be want to do is be a bit more flexible with them so that we could check things after the user has actually inputted data. So for example, our compliance check for installed memory might say have a an error or a warning if there's less than four gigs of memory by default, but if they want to install Photoshop, that might then bump up to eight gigs of memory. So for example, here in our um, demo config we've got up and running here, currently our installed memory shows as a green state, so it's all okay. But if I click Photoshop, now we're showing a warning and it's saying 16 gigabytes is recommended for Photoshop, eight um, is the minimum required. So basically that's why it's not called pre-flight checks and if you're used to having them all at the very start and then you just kind of ignore them going forward through the rest of the GUI, um, maybe just consider a slight mind shift where you could use this in, slight, in other areas. Um, and we'll run through the config about how this stuff works. Now just off the bat, the compliance settings are uh, essentially an extension of the validation settings. Um, so I'd highly recommend going and checking out the validation video first. Um, it'll show you how to build up the WMI queries and that structure there. I'm just kind of going to skip over that. Um, and if you want to check that out in a bit more detail, check out the validation video. Um, the other thing as well is that for this type of functionality, um, where you're turning compliance settings on and off depending on the state of other controls. With that, you're looking um, to use the grouping function. Um, and I'd also recommend checking out the grouping um, videos if you haven't already um, to really understand some of the things that I'll be covering in this video. So that's the, the high level. Uh, let's quickly dive into the config and I'll run through the basics of how this is all set up. Right, so inside our TS GUI package and the config examples folder, there's this config underscore compliance file, which is this one here. Now at the top you'll actually see a checkbox um, and the reason for that is to um, we use that to create a toggle for our groups like we did in the demo that I just showed you which turns the compliance settings on and off so that GUI option is just there to demonstrate that particular part of the functionality. So it's just really used to create a toggle or a couple of toggles in this case. Where it actually starts, the actual compliance part starts, is down here. There's this new type called a traffic light. So the traffic light um, is obviously the, the little um, dots with the various colors depending on the various states. Uh, in the future, I hope to expand this to um, have other visual things like a tick and a cross and that kind of thing. Um, but for now, uh, the nice simple traffic light is the way to go. Now all of this stuff here is the same as in validation. Um, so here's our query, the property we're, filling, um, we're pulling. Uh, we're going to do a calculation on it to get it to like gigabytes. And then what we're going to do down here, rather than a validation section, we've got a compliance section. And like validation, these things are group aware. So you can turn these things on, these sections on and off using group membership, which is how we got that functionality to work with the Photoshop tick box before. Now the difference between validation and compliance, if we pull up our validation so we can do a quick comparison, is that in validation we have a valid and an invalid. And those are our two options. In compliance we have OK, warning, error, and invalid. 
Now, the OK is obviously the green dot and everything's happy. The warning, you'll get an orange dot. And you will also, the if you hover over the um, traffic light, you will get this message, whatever you happen to set that to be. Uh, if you set error, you will also, you will also see this um, message in the tooltip and the dot will go red. Now invalid will also make the dot go red. The difference between the invalid state and the error state is that an error will just th pull up the red dot and give you that message when you hover over it. The invalid state will actually stop the GUI from going any further, just like in the validation option. It'll also immediately throw up this message in a little error pop-up. So essentially, if you want the use, if the compliance settings that you're pulling up, you want that to actually stop the user from going any further, you use the invalid state. If you just want to show a red dot, but you can still go past it, then you use the error state. And the way these are evaluated, basically, is that if you have an invalid state, the thing's invalid, no matter if any other matches um, apply. Um, and it kind of works back. So from it goes to invalid, then to error. If there's no errors, then it checks for warnings. If there's no warnings, then it will check for an OK block. Now, if you've got, if you haven't set anything, for your OK values, it will just um, assume that the option is OK and mark it green. If you have applied an OK block, it's going to evaluate this rule here and it will only um, mark the traffic light as OK or the compliance option as OK if this rule matches. Now, if it doesn't match, a bit further down, Is it default state if you have an OK block set and the OK part doesn't match and none of the other rules match the compliance option will apply whatever you've set as the default state so whether that's OK warning error or invalid the default is for invalid so just be aware of that when you're using the OK option, that if you are setting it and these rules don't match, just be aware that that default state um, will come into play. So that's pretty much it. The, like the high level, that's really all there is to it. Uh, again, highly recommend going and checking out the validation video, um, which runs through the different rules. Uh, there are some new rules that have been created for this version that apply to both the validation and the compliance settings. So you can do some basic math, i.e. is it less than, is it greater than, is it greater than or equal to, um, etc. Um, but otherwise, it's the same structure. If one of those rules um, applies, then it will be marked in the state. Now, there's a couple of other minor differences to be aware of as well between validation and compliance. Um, the first one is to do with the messages. Now, in validation, because you're actually validating user input and you have a direct comparison, um, it will, by default, come, if you don't set anything in this message field, um, it will come up and just say, you know, computer name one is invalid. Whatever you happen to have entered it in or have selected is what is going to pop up plus is invalid. With compliance, it doesn't work like that. And the reason is that a lot of these queries are coming up with fairly arbitrary values that have no real context inside the GUI. So for example, when we're checking the power status, the value it's actually kind of come back with is two. So if we just throw up an error that says two is invalid, it's actually not particularly useful for the user. Um, so in compliance, it's really kind of a requirement um, to put in these message um, parts of the config so that the messages are actually coming out as something a bit actually, actually useful um, to the user. The other thing to be aware of 
um, is this particular option here. Now again, because some of these values that you're querying, um, they may come back with a null value. Now this power status one is a perfect example. If you check the power status on a laptop, it's going to come back, if you're connected to the power, it's going to come back with a result of two. If you're not connected to the power, it comes back with one. Now if you connect, if you run the same query on a desktop, there is no battery status and when there is no Win32 battery. Um, because it has no battery, it's a desktop. So what it's going to come back with is a null value. Um, now if you want to compare to that, basically what the query is going to return is star null. So that's um, something you can use as a query um, to do your rules and comparisons on. So just be aware of that with some of these things. Um, so this will basically say if the power is connected, i.e. the value is 2, then it's OK. Otherwise, if it's null, i.e. it's a desktop, then it's also OK. Everything else um, goes into a default state, um, which is your warning. Now the last thing, um, obviously, is you don't really want to have to restart the entire task sequence if you've just forgotten to plug the power in. Um, so down the bottom here is this compliance refresh button. Now this is basically is exactly as it says, it's just something that says refresh. Um, and you can click it and it will rerun all these queries, rerun the compliance based on the group memberships and you know, update the GUI. So if we actually have a look at our demo again, let's see how it all kind of hangs together. So in our GUI, we have our three traffic lights. And actually, let's look at the actual config of this particular TS GUI layout. Now, if I pull the power out and I click refresh, we now go into an error state. And you can have a look, see down here, our default state is error. If we put it back in, click refresh, back to green. Now with our Photoshop tick box, if we have a look a bit further back up here. On this checkbox, we have with our label of Photoshop, we have two toggles. And basically, they are inverses of each other. If the tick box um, is checked, i.e. it's enabled, well, the group will be enabled when the check box is true. It will be disabled when it's false. This one is vice versa. And if we have a look a bit further down here, this is the installed memory compliance um, settings. And there are two settings. This is the default one. And this compliance is active when the group, no Photoshop group is enabled. So basically, when this is false, i.e. not checked. If this group is enabled, i.e. that one's disabled, then it fails over into this one. So you can see here that our rules are more stringent so it's okay if the memory is greater than or equal to 16 gigs if it's less than 16 it's a warning if it's less than eight it's an error and if it's less than four then it's invalid um, whereas by default it's um, if it's greater than or equal to eight then it's totally fine you get a warning under eight you get an error under four and it will stop you from installing completely if you're under two and that's basically what's happening here. This machine um, is an 8 gig uh, virtual machine. Um, so this is now throwing a warning because it's less than 16 gigs. And that's really all there is to compliance. Um, this compliance refresh button, just an FYI, this will refresh everything on the particular page so if for some reason you've got 
compliance settings stretched across multiple pages, just be aware that you'll need a, um, a refresh button per page um, to make that work, assuming you want it to work in that way. And in the compliance um, example config as well, there's a few sort of default things, basically the ones here. Have you got enough memory? Is the power connected? Is the Wi-Fi disconnected? Um, i.e. are you on the LAN? Um, from there you can pretty much build whatever queries you want from WMI um, and build your own compliance rules. For example, you may have an option for, um, say, your IT department. You may say, if you're running an IT, you can only have one of these slightly higher spec machines. And so you'll have a list of, in your OK rule set, it'd be, um, you know, select um, model from Win32 computer system. And then you would have an OK rule, so rule type uh, equals, and then it would be a big list of all the models that you'd support for that particular function or department. Um, so those are the sorts of things you can do. Uh, if you want to, and have things dynamically update within the GUI um, as you go. So that's it. Uh, if you have any queries, please get in touch via the 20road.com website. Um, any questions, requests, um, bug reports, any of that kind of thing. Thanks very much.